This video is sponsored by Linode. Check the link down below for a $100 60-day credit. It has been a while since we checked out Garuda Linux here on the channel. Uh, last time, I didn't have the uh, nicest things to say about it, but it's been, been a while and there's been quite a few updates and changes, so I figured now is a good time to take a look at the Arch-based distribution. Right now, I am in the operating system. If you're familiar with this at all, they are most known for their, dare I say, dramatic level of eye candy and customization on their dragonized version. This is the latest release announcement. You can see 230305, just over a week ago this was released. This is running in a virtual machine, so if you see any performance issues, that is most likely the issue. But one of the big changes is they actually moved the Latte dock in replacement with actual like KDE widgets and system components, which is nice. It's a thing of less is better when it comes to installing an operating system like this. We have information about the setup assistant, which I did keep open, Garuda Update 4.0. I'm not gonna dive into every single little thing here, but I will definitely link to this down below. One thing that is nice though is their separate Garuda repository. It has been argued that you're not a real Linux distribution unless if you have your very own repositories. Hot take by uh, Brody there. And if you do go to this page, you can click this to see a full change log of everything that is going on. And I will note that out of all the distributions, this is one of them that definitely does a really good job at maintaining a variety of different desktop environments. Obviously the KDE Dragonized version being the most popular and they do have Git and Lite versions if you just want a vanilla KDE experience with Garuda as the uh, backing distribution. So let's minimize this for now and I'm going to start by kind of going over some of my initial little complaints here and all my complaints seem to be uh, generally based on appearance preferences. I think these icons are silly, as well as some of the theming, but it's their brand. You gotta respect it in the, um, most circumstances here. The overall look is something I'd probably set up on like a really janky like Windows and 7 install when I was 12 years old. But for many people, it's absolutely beautiful. And of course, you could always just change the icons. It's KDE Plasma, so you could really just do a lot. Getting into some of the actual system components, this is the Garuda setup, which this will allow you and make it a lot easier to grab certain system components. OS preferences, we have things like a Samba scanner printer support, additional wallpapers, things like that. If I go over to input, we have a bunch of fonts we can choose from. You could add additional software centers, and they do have their own right here. If I click on that, this is Octopi. Watch this, it's not the most like user, well, it's pretty user friendly, but it's not like a noob friendly. You have all your different packages here. For the specific package, we have 080 selected. It gives you the description, some links. You have your files, actions. You can open up the terminal and watch it actually do some things. Overall, a fairly decent package manager, especially if you have experience kind of working with Linux packages. Or of course, you can just use this to grab like the uh, Discover Center, for example. You have additional kernels here that you could select. I believe that this ships with the uh, Zen kernel. We have Office applications, so if I wanted to grab only Office right here, I could. And there are a lot more to choose from and a lot more other Office type programs, such as GNU Cache. Browsers, they are using this one that we just had open. This is a uh, Fire Dragon, which I believe is just a um, kind of a, a fork of Firefox, I do believe. So you could grab your preferred stuff there. I do like it when uh, operating systems do this. They didn't do this during the install, but it is nice that it's here. You could grab popular communication things such as Discord, Microsoft Teams. And if I go over, there's really a lot of categories allowing you to grab uh, various popular packages. So if I go into multimedia, for example, I'm not seeing MPV, is it the default? It is the default, so that's good. That's my preferred default, which is cool. Virtualization, other, things like Conky, etc. Now I don't see any uh, gaming categories. So I'm gonna hit cancel just so I don't actually install anything and hit okay. And here is Gruda Linux Raptor. Again, this is an Arch distribution rolling release here. I know I just said that little thing didn't have um, gaming categories right here, Gruda Gamer. This is where you'd go ahead and get all that. So a lot of good tools here. We have Steam Bottles, which is really nice for installing one of my favorite games, which is uh, Empire Earth 2. I have a whole separate video covering a lot of these tools and bottles, it's definitely worth checking out if you're trying to game on Linux. But here we have some games, which are just some games that are available in the repositories, and then we have emulators, which again, a lot of these are absolutely fantastic, wonderful experience with things like uh, DuckStation, PCSX2, wonderful software. So I'm just gonna discard. So I didn't select anything, I'm gonna hit apply. So let's go ahead and close this out and it will take us back into Groot to welcome. 
We have settings manager, network assistant, a lot of tools here. There was definitely some of these last time I took a look, but I was just gonna open that up. Definitely not as much and it wasn't this uh, kind of user friendly system cleaner. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so this just basically added Stacer, which is a separate utility. Oh, there it goes. So there's the option for it, but it didn't come pre-installed. This is like a kind of a C cleaner for a Linux type situation. You're probably familiar with it. You have your startup applications here. You have your actual cleaner for like package cache, crash reports, things like that. And really a lot of other tools that you could use in this. And I do have to warn you right here, do uh, be careful disabling services. If you jump into that, you could have a real bad time. And it doesn't look like welcome opened again, so I'm gonna open it through here. Partition manager, so this is probably gonna open up KDE partition manager. Yes, it did. So in comparison to a lot of distros, it is a very nice welcome center. And it looks like they're trying to kind of integrate the uh, Mac OS style menu system up here. So if I open up, I believe this is Dolphin. You could see up here, the uh, menu is integrated within the taskbar which I believe is just done with a uh, KDE widget. So if I go enter edit mode, you can see right here, window app menu. That is one thing a lot of different Linux distributions try to do is integrate the menu into the taskbar. Doing it with like just QT applications or just the KDE Plasma applications usually is not a problem at all, but then you have issues when you're running a non KDE application or applications that don't support that integration. So let's try to find an example here. So let's grab an application I know uses a GTK. Let's grab GIMP here. Oh, that's cool. It opens up the little terminal for us to type in our password. Uh, continue. I really do like the Octopi thing. This is super cool. And there we go. There's my example. The uh, menu's down here, not up here. I do hope someday that they can integrate GTK and QT applications like that. That'd be super cool. There's a lot of uh, distributions that try to be like Mac OS clones that just use that widget and it's uh, half successful as you can see, but that's not at all what this operating system is trying to be. So they get a pass. And I do believe that if I uh, maximize something such as the welcome, you could see that the uh, taskbar becomes integrated within the uh, top menu here, which is also a nice little clean feature. And then additionally, you can open up the setup assistant again. You can access some things such as the chaotic AUR, and then we can go ahead and close this out. Now I am getting a little bit of uh, something going on here, which doesn't look necessarily the cleanest, but if I jump into edit mode here, still kind of popping up here and there, but we can see that this is the task manager and right here we have options to configure this panel. So again, like I said in the beginning, it is nice that they're using more of just the KDE Plasma integrated features to kind of get the uh, overall look that they are going for. Now, like I said, I think it looks a little cheesy. So if it was me, I am gonna go over here, system settings, under appearance, you could change just about everything. So it looks like they have two of their own. They have the default dragonized, and then they have a suite here. So let's go ahead and apply that. There's not too much of a difference. This does already look a little bit better. Still has those icons though. So if I had it my way, I'd go over to icons. And KDE Plasma is really nice at the customization stuff. So I could just go ahead and grab more search up something like uh, Vimix, I believe. There it is, install that. Kind of sticking with the theme, let's go Ruby here. Let's use them and there we go. So now that's looking a little bit better in my opinion, but overall it is a really clean distro and they have made a substantial improvements to the point where it is recommendable as a uh, distribution. I do have to kind of put it on a list above uh, some other arch based distros. Definitely not number one, I'd have to give that to Endeavor OS, but this is a fantastic way to get into some of these uh, tiling window managers. I've tried the i3 version in the past and it was a really good time as well as Sway. Sway's basically i3 in Wayland. Definitely not gonna be switching to this. I'm kind of a, a Norbara fanboy at the moment, but I do like what they've done here and it's a little sluggish in this uh, virtual machine, but I can tell that on uh, some good hardware, this will. This is a clean, snappy Linux distribution, especially with the optimizations and so just the stuff it ships with that Zen kernel like we mentioned. I believe the default file system, actually we could check that. If we open up welcome and go to the partition manager, I'm pretty sure it's ButterFS, which we can see right here it is indeed. We have that, we have the chaotic AUR, which is a bunch of pre-compiled binaries from the AUR. Well, it's just it really increases that package availability. We have Fire Dragon, which I said earlier that it's Firefox, which is true, but I believe it's a fork of a fork. Cause I'm pretty sure it's uh, based off LibreWolf. And of course they have their settings manager, which I don't think I opened. So if I go over here, we have Gruda Assistant, Gruda Gamer, the settings manager. So if I open this up, 
This is, uh, I think, just a customized version of the Manjaro settings manager, which gives us some hardware configuration. We can change our kernel here. Yeah, this is from Manjaro. We could change our kernel here, so running Linux Zen. So for some reason, you had some hardware incompatibility with that. You could easily switch that. And then we have some locale settings and stuff like that. So again, awesome distro, almost as awesome as the sponsor of today's video, Linode. You might not be able to run Garuda Linux, but you can definitely run Arch Linux, which is cool to say that your server is running Arch, by the way. Spin up Arch or a wide variety of distros using Linode, or you can use one of their one-click installers to get a service such as Nextcloud, Plex, Focal Board, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there. Uh, spun up with ease, again, use the link down below for a $100 60 day credit, and I do hope you have a very good day. Again, links to the Garuda website, as well as the release announcement will be down below. Also, this is a new wide angle lens so let me know if the video looks okay as well as the audio i'm testing out a really small shotgun thing so if it sounds horrible let me know down below with all that i do hope you have a good day and good